Welcome to the Mystery Room. I am Abby. And I am Shannon. And welcome back to part two of Who Killed Jill Halliburton Sue. Thank that you. was really rhymey. Oh, well, it was. I like that. I did. I like that. Oh my God, let's go. Oh my God, poets. We could be poets. Yeah. Oh my God, we're oh. so in sync. I love it. I love it. Right. Anyway, uh, to start off with, let's tell our listeners what we're drinking we are drinking rosé prosecco because i passed an exam today and i was like why not treat ourselves and it is pretty much the only prosecco that i actually like and for all the sickos out there who claim they like prosecco we all know you're lying because it tastes like petrol fluid people (laughs) Just say they like Prosecco. I don't know why they say it, but they do. I'm sorry. But after the first glass, it's nasty. But this Rosé Prosecco is actually quite nice. It is, isn't it? Yeah. There's a club card price in Tesco. We love, oh, we love, we love a club card. <laughs> uh, I just know what? I actually think Prosecco tastes better the more you drink it. Like my, When I first take a sip, I'm like... Ugh. You're not cool because you say you like Prosecco. Well, now I feel attacked. <laughs> first I call you a psychopath. And I know. <laughs> My auntie really, I can't drink anything. My auntie really likes Prosecco. I'll take anything. Nice, I do like it. Thank you. I'm really tired today because I have just finished a 13-hour shift. I could honestly fall asleep. I would say I, I mean, hope this Prosecco wakes me up, but I'm pretty sure alcohol makes you more tired. It does, it does. So, yeah. Maybe after the second or third glass, I'm like, woo, I'm on a good wavelength. I love it when you go home to like, see your dad or your mum, and you come back, and you're always waved like you are actually <laughs> always drunk it's actually hilarious you come and you can tell as well because like you're always smiling and your voice just goes different yeah i know it goes all yeah and then the next day i'm just like hungover, yeah, i know i've I noticed like i get it. i, I like get that it. message in the morning and it's like hungover today <laughs> pretty much yes. every weekend yeah i know that sounds really bad i'm really sorry i keep making out like you're an alcoholic i know i'm really sorry i, I promise i'm not Maybe my parents are because whenever I go over there, clearly I just yeah. It's like whenever I go to your mum, she always tries to feed me alcohol. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No, <laughs> we, we love <laughs> no, Helen. No, don't no, no, we love Helen. <laughs> As we wrapped up last week's episode, we've had so many emails through, and someone who actually worked on the documentary that I mentioned last week has cleared a few things up with us because if you go online so many different articles say so many different things Mm. and since the series actually finished they found out that Dante's DNA was only found on the green belt so it wasn't actually found on the knife like we said last week so yeah only the green belt which was found by the front door and the knife that was in the bath wasn't actually the murder weapon they've never actually determined what was used well they know it was a knife but they never determined which one we've also had the honor of interviewing dna expert tiffany roy who was the forensic expert who discovered that the Bowood county labs would be an unethical in their testings and made them lose their accreditation she was featured in the documentary who killed jill halliburton and sue or moochie as some people know it as so head over to our patreon if you'd love to listen to that and you definitely will because there's so much information which she has given us. And she always says that this case is very close to her heart. So definitely, definitely, definitely wouldn't recommend more. She's such a lovely woman. So yeah, she took the time out to speak to us, which I thought was yeah. really nice. Thank you, Tiffany. Last week, we spoke a lot about Justin Sue and how he seems like the prime suspect in this murder. But the more we researched, our mind changed and we started to question Dr. Sue, which is Justin's father. We were advised to look into the Broward County Clerk's case, where we found that Dr. Sue had been in trouble with the law before. Back in the early 90s, one of his colleagues at the University of Florida, Gary Martin, who is now actually the captain at Fort Lauderdale Police Department, uh, he accused Dr. Sue of assaulting him. Dr. Sue wanted to buy some computers and forge the invoices in some way for the computers. Gary Martin called him out on this and Dr. Sue physically beat him badly. Gary ended up suing Mr. Sue and the university. But this isn't the only time that Dr. Sue has been violent. So it was also discovered that during his and Jill's trip to Malaysia, 
there was an incident between the couple where the police were called. We aren't exactly sure what had happened on this trip, but we know that there was some sort of altercation with the couple on that holiday. And with his past history of violence, I can only imagine that this isn't the first time that the couple had these such arguments. We can assume that him and his wife had an argument on the morning of the murder. He murdered her, went to work, so it made it like, so he's out the house. Then he sent his son home, so it would set his son up, because Dr. Sue wasn't actually meant to go to work that morning and decided last minute that he would. It's also very suspicious that he turned on the drop cam exactly as someone disconnected the camera. He is either one very lucky man or he's lying to cover his own back. And I mean, that is bloody lucky. Imagine getting to work, 45 minutes into your shift, and you're like, just checking on the wife. Why are you checking on your wife anyway? I think that's such a freaky thing to do. We have, like, ring doorbells, and, like, a ring doorbell even, sorry. But I wouldn't just sit there bloody being like, time to daily the house today. I would only do it if someone rung the doorbell. Yeah, exactly. I don't just go and check it randomly in a day. That's what I mean. Like, if someone's rung the doorbell... So like... why is he checking the camera anyway? Does he not trust his wife? And don't forget that in the initial interview with Dr. Sue, he was very happy to throw his son under the bus and try and blame everything on him, saying that he saw a white male. But as soon as they arrested Deontay, his narrative changed to sit the new one. Because surely you would remember the colour of someone's skin. Also now know that when you disconnect the drop cam, it would send Dr. Sue three snapshots to his computer of the last things it captured. So where are these snapshots and why weren't they ever showed in court? We also mentioned last week that it was a very white community. So Deontay, being a young black man, would stand out. And when the neighbour saw someone outside the house, someone would 100% notice him. Did Dr. Sue give her some money for her to change her story? Because we now know that they were a very wealthy family and we honestly wouldn't put it past him. He married his assistant, who is 37 years younger than him, so soon after his wife's death. They married in 2017 and divorced in 2020, where he gave her a very big settlement in the divorce, to never mention their marriage, which is very suspicious. Why would you pay someone so much to never talk about their marriage? Maybe he confessed to her and then paid her off to keep her mouth shut. But then I feel like no amount of money in the world would ever make me be like, no, no. okay, you've murdered your ex-wife, give us some hush money. Yeah. But it's really weird, like, he married his assistant. Like, were they having an affair this whole time? Yeah, well... Jill found out. He killed Jill, made mm. it like a home invasion. Because you wouldn't marry someone so quickly after if you were yeah. so in love with your wife. I'm sorry, you wouldn't. I've told my boyfriend that if I die, I'm not one of these girls who are like, oh, I want you to move on and be happy. No, you're not moving on. I don't want you to move on. <laughs> you sit there and cry over me for at least 20 years. Oh, and then God. we'll maybe talk about it. <laughs> Anyway, maybe that I, is it. Maybe that is what happened. Maybe she found out about the. I maybe I, they're having a whole affair. I do think Juicy. that they were definitely having a affair while Jill was alive. Because yes, you always see it in cases like this where these people marry so soon after their spouses died, and then it turns out that they were actually seeing each other this whole time, and the other partner had found out. I would not put it past him. Just hear me out. It's very out there. So. Yeah, Joe found out he wanted to get rid of her, but he didn't want to divorce her because obviously she had a lot of money yes. because she's the wealthy one, let's be honest. So he didn't want to divorce her because then he'd be left with nothing. But if she died, obviously he'd in him and his children would inherit everything. So he killed her, got all the money. We've cracked the case, that's it. <laughs> Arrest him, take him back in for questioning, he'll crack in an instant. Gosh, Alan. Honestly. Honestly, I don't understand why we are not hired as PIs. That's what I mean. Where's our job offers to become detectives? This is crazy. Like, we've cracked the case. Yeah. And it's only been, what, two weeks? Yeah. And it took them nearly, I don't know, when did she die? 2014, wasn't it? And he only went to prison in 2022. So almost time. 10 years and we've cracked it in two weeks. Exactly. Come on. We should be doing a documentary. Now let's go back and look at Dante. So as we mentioned last week, he was dubbed as the Robin Hood of his community, where he would steal from the rich and give back to the poor. He would never steal for his own need. He would always give any money he got from things he stole back to the poor people in Florida. 
just want to point out we're not actually justifying robberies like you know oh yeah it's fine if you rob and give the money to someone else we're not saying that but obviously in the UK we have benefits and yeah the government help well people in need they like to make out that they do but... yeah but obviously in America I know they do things like food stamps and stuff like that but I don't yeah. think they have like a benefit system like the UK so I'm pretty sure like in the neighborhood that they grew up in it would just be like they would have to try and work and stuff as much as they could yeah so i'm not saying like he should go out and rob to get money but as you'll find out he started doing this at a very young age so dante's full name is dante omar rosales but his friends knew him as muchi no one can quite remember where the nickname come from but he was called it from a very young age and it kind of just stuck he attended four good marshall elementary school then he went on to arthur roberts Ash Middle School and then he finished his studies in Dillard High School. So him and his brother had the same dad and then his other brother and sister had a different dad. So they were half siblings, not full siblings. Yeah. They lived with their mother and would often see their dads every weekend. One of his neighbours said that she went to middle school with Dante and he would often see him at the skate park with his brother doing normal kid things. She said, and I quote, he was never a negative person, always wanted to make people laugh. And you can see that in the documentary. He just, even though he's in this really shitty situation, he still sat there making jokes. Like, I think he's just trying to find the best in a crappy situation, basically. Yeah. His half-brother said that when they were younger, the family would live off food stamps and their mum would often work two minimum wage jobs at once. Him and his siblings used to sell candy outside shops they would wash cars and even sell mangoes. But as they got older, that's when they started breaking into houses. I love a mango. So I do love mangoes. But it's got to be like a ripe, just fresh one, mango. Yeah. There's nothing worse than a mango that's just not quite ripe. Yeah, like a really hard bit of mango. Ugh, no. Yeah, no, I do like mango. Yeah. We never get them, though. I know. I usually get it with my meal deal. Yeah, same. <laughs> that or pineapple, because <laughs> I love pineapple as well. Have you not... Fun fact, right? Did you know pineapple... Has something in them. I can't remember what it's called. Great fact. Yeah, I know. Wait, I'm not finished. It has something in them that... Have you noticed when you eat pineapple, it tingles? Like your tongue, not on your cheeks? Yeah. Are you sure? Or no, are you just saying I'm that? I'm saying, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, no. I've noticed, okay, I'm when not, I eat pineapple... I'm not you. I kind of just inhale my food. So. Well, next time, don't inhale it. and like, Just enjoy it. Just yeah, it just savour the pineapple. Oh, tingles. <laughs> So there's something in pineapple that, like, not eats your flesh, but sort of gets at your flesh in a way. That's why when you eat pineapple, it tingles their mouth. I've noticed it. Maybe other people don't. You know but... what? My niece called me the other day. She's like, you're a pretty pig. Because I finished my ice cream really quickly. It's like a compliment, but an insult at the same time. <laughs> I can't help it. I eat quick. By the age of 14, Deontay had already been labelled a habitual juvenile offender. He racked up many criminal charges, often having to do with burglary, possession of burglary tools and auto theft. So how did he go from burglary to being in prison for murder? Like we mentioned before, only his DNA was found on the belt. His DNA was nowhere else in the house and a crime this bloody and with the house being ransacked, you would expect his DNA to be all over that house. Dr. Sue also mentioned seeing a white man and Deontay is black. So how was he ever convicted for this case? Blows my mind. Yes, he has a history of breaking into people's houses, but everyone knows Deontay has said he would never harm anyone. He got caught from a burglary once before because someone was in the house, but he just ran. And the murder of Jill seems very personal. And if you were to break into someone's house for money and someone was there, you wouldn't kill them the way Jill was killed. Which I honestly believe, I don't do this just so that everyone else, I'm not going to incriminate myself, but if I was to break in someone's house and I saw someone there, yes, I'd probably run. Or I would probably knock them out, like hit them with something. I wouldn't stab them 25 times. No, it is just too personal. Yeah, I would honestly, I would just punch, especially if it was a woman, I would just like probably like push her over or like yeah. punch her. Yeah. Not saying that domestic violence is good or like woman abuse is good because not. But if you were a bloke and you broke into someone's house and there was a woman there, you would just knock her out. You yeah. wouldn't stab her. No. And surely if they're using the son's knives... 
he would have to see her or even hear her and go rooting around for these knives because you wouldn't just know they're there in his room. No, no, exactly. So she would have heard him. She would have heard him break the window. It just doesn't make sense. What? Jill Sue didn't hear it. And then what? He managed to go to Justin's room to pick up a random knife, which he clearly knew was there. Yeah. And then kill her. I'm sorry. It wouldn't happen like that. She would hear it. She would go and see what it is. She would see him. They would probably fight. But there was no signs. It was just the stab wounds. That, yeah, so exactly. that's I mean, It just doesn't make sense. I just don't understand how he ever got convicted for this murder when mm-hmm. the whole evidence and the whole story just doesn't add up. No. One bit of DNA in that house and it's like, this guy did it. Yeah, like it's no, ridiculous. He's got to have more evidence than that. I can understand why the jury might think he did it. Dionte got out of his handcuffs. I don't know. I'm not laughing. It's not. But it's kind of funny because it's just crazy how he actually did this. So he managed to get out of his handcuffs and the jumpsuit and escape from Broadwood County Courthouse and was on the run for five days. There was a massive reward after him. I think it went up to like fifty thousand dollars. The whole court and the police department they were made to look like idiots basically because how he got out was crazy. So after the five days, he finally was apprehended in a day's inn in Palm Beach. He escaped down a side stairwell and was picked up and taken in a car where he got changed and then he got into a different car. Eight people were eventually charged in helping him escape. When Dante asked why he escaped, he claimed that he wanted to get out and to prove his innocence because no one believed him and the police were doing nothing to find any evidence that doesn't go against him. They found him, basically. As soon as they arrested him, it's like, yeah, it's him. We're going to focus all our energy on making it him. So, and I kind of do believe this because it even happens today. And I can imagine back in 2014, it's probably a lot worse than it is today. But seeing a young black man arrested for something he didn't do isn't uncommon in America. And I feel like as soon as they saw him, they were like, yes, definitely him, it's definitely him. So the prosecution in this case actually used his escape in the trial to show that he was guilty. Of course. They're just, they're just trying to find anything. Yes, he escaped. It was actually quite amusing. Like, if you watch the documentary, it's actually quite amusing. Because I'm just like, you literally sat there going, how has this even happened? Like, he literally got out his handcuffs, his jumpsuit, and just legged it down a stairwell. And he wasn't even caught. And it was even more embarrassing because... They shut down the courthouse. They were like, no one's allowed in or out of the courthouse because they assumed he was still in there. A few hours later, they're like, no, he left the courthouse. Well, obviously he left the courthouse. If you're going to break out, you're not going to stay there, are you? It was just amusing to watch because it was like, yeah, someone's going to escape and just, you know, chill out in the courthouse and just wait. Wait for what? Obviously he's going to run. Yeah, that's, that is very true, yeah. But to be honest, running probably wasn't the best idea for him because it does make you look guilty as shit. Oh, yeah. I think if he didn't run, he might have stood a bit more of a chance at trial. But because he ran and obviously prosecution were allowed to use it, you don't run unless you're guilty. Yeah. But still, even after that, I still 100% believe he is innocent. I do. I just don't really think that you can go from burglaring... Burglaring? Burglaring? (laughs) Committing a burglary to then killing someone in such a personal, violent way. way. Yeah. In May 2022, Deontay was sentenced to life in prison. He addressed the Sioux family saying, I was raised with principles and morals and I would never take a wife from her husband and I would never take a mother from her child. He also repeatedly mentioned, I've spent seven years in jail and have reflected that I could never commit a crime like this the alleged 25 times Mrs. Sue was stabbed. That is beyond my comprehension. I don't possess the hate and rage inside my heart to commit such a heinous crime. He also stated that they can connect him to a polygraph at any time and it would prove his innocence. I'm not a massive fan of lie detectors because... Anyone can kind of falsify. Because if someone's really nervous, it does come back saying they're lying. Yeah. But they're not. And if someone's like really, really chilled and relaxed... Even if they're lying, it would come back as to tell the truth. Yeah, you can you can really play with those and fix them to how you want them, like depending on how you make yourself feel or I just don't really agree with them. Have you seen? Sorry. Okay. I can't remember what it's called. It's a program and it was a woman who was she was obese. 
she was obese and she never she never got out of bed really like she was she'd go from the sofa to her bed and her boyfriend husband would do everything for her and he was so skinny this woman right she was so insecure that she got a lie detector on her phone and and there was a picture of Mel B from the Spice Girls and she asked him on the lie detector do you fancy Mel B and he put he said no and so he put his thumb on the phone on the lie detector and she was like it said lie (laughs) and uh she was like I'm gonna ask you again do you fancy Mel B he said no and it came back as a lie again and she didn't speak to him because this light detector came back as a lie on her phone saying that he fancied Mel B. She should have asked a question like, is my hair blonde? <laughs> and then at least we'd know if he's lying or not. Yeah, so she did ask him. Oh, more... so she asked him like basic questions. Yeah, and then she uh, then she asked him that. But why would you care if you fancied a celebrity? I don't understand. Also, it's on your phone? Yeah. I'm like, what sorry. does it do? Like, guess your sweat levels. I don't know. Also, I mean, how would it detect that he you're lying? Be, he might just be a very sweaty person. <laughs> That's crazy. I know. I just had to... I just that. honestly... I just worry that unless Dr. Sue actually turned around and was like, yes, I did it, he'll never be free. And mm. it makes me sad because I honestly do not believe he deserves to be in prison. And he's missed no. out on so much of his life. Yeah. And the statement he gave there... Oh. I know. That, and do you know what? Feels. In the documentary, he seems like such a nice person. I know people are like, yeah, but how is he a nice person? He robs houses. Okay. Some people are bloody rude, but everyone's like, I'm still a nice person. Just because he robs houses. No one knows everyone's situation. Some people rob houses because they're dickheads. He was trying to help his mum out, who seemed to work her ass off to provide for her kids. Yeah. And in America, it does seem a lot harder. Like, obviously, in the UK, we get. NHS covered they have to pay for all their medical treatment they have to pay for everything so I do kind of feel sorry for people in America because they do seem to have a lot more like costs than we do yeah and they get less holidays well yeah well some jobs don't give you holiday out there oh that's disgusting it's like it's, I think it's all unpaid they really corporate America I know and it's just like how anyone could frame someone for a murder that they committed and then go to sleep at night like nothing happened yeah and it blows my mind I really, really hope that they do prove his innocence and he does get set free. There has to be someone out there to know something. There has to be some form of evidence out there to know something. Like, surely Dropcam have everything saved on a database. Mm-hmm. Surely the footage doesn't just disappear. I'm pretty sure it isn't like when it's something's on the web, it's out there for good. Yeah. It's yeah. always like some sort of footprint. Yeah, but the thing is, I, I also think they that family has a lot of money and, you know, with the right amount of money... Yeah, you can make anyone disappear. Yeah. So we believe that the DNA used in the trial should have never, ever been used. That really should be thrown out. It really, really should. And surely, I honestly feel like that is just one reason to have a retrial. Mm -hmm. Because that is the only thing that links Dionte to that house. The truth always comes out in the end. And I honestly wish nothing more for the truth to be told. And for Dante to get his freedom. Yeah, and to see his kid again. Oh, yes. Mm. That's what I mean. Like, it's like, if he really got that free, they're all like, oh, well, here's some money for being wrongly convicted. But you have taken away someone's years. Yeah. And I do spend a lot more of my free time focusing on things that I enjoy and that I find important. Mm. And that's what I mean. You've taken away this guy's years. Yeah. Because you know the prosecution? I've always wondered this in cases. And like, defendant because obviously someone always has to defend the bad people and obviously they have to try their best to try and get them a fair trial but it's like the prosecution and defense do you ever think they sit there and think well now i think this guy is innocent anyway but i still have to do my job or do you think they sit there in prosecution like nah he's definitely i wondered that as well to be honest i do think though if they did think they honestly thought this person was guilty they wouldn't represent them yeah but someone had to represent it's like like ted bundy and jeffrey dharma and stuff like Like, someone had to defend them yeah but i think because legally everyone's entitled to a defense but it's like prosecution do you think they ever sit there and think okay yes i'm the prosecution i don't actually think they're guilty 100 percent. and sometimes i think you can tell by the amount of of evidence they give and the way that they speak in court it's interesting to know because i'm just like i want to know like what's the percentage of people actually thinking okay yeah yeah that's it. That's that's the interesting story. Our source has also told us that Deontay is still holding hope for the future. 
Deontay has a girlfriend called Naisha who he is very happy with and police actually ended up driving his old girlfriend Crystal away which is sad but if he's happy with this new because girlfriend. Crystal is one of the eight that got arrested when he escaped she ah. went to prison I want to say two years and they basically released her under the condition I think that she wouldn't have anything to do uh, with him okay okay when he was in prison his family and the community where he lived they all had this like massive group being like he's innocent he's innocent this isn't him he was never like this and this isn't Dante we know like he would never hurt anyone like this and they all had this like massive following and it just felt like it kind of annoyed the police and the police were just picking on his family and friends because they were so like, for him and they had his back they actually started putting up billboards it had a picture of Jill and a picture of Dante and it said, two victims, one truth. The Sue family were getting really annoyed, saying, how can they put him next to my wife? And in Dr. Sue's closing statement, if you listen to it very carefully, it almost sounds like a confession. So when he sits there going, you, so to Dante, it almost sounds like he wants to say, I. And even the judge at one point had to like look to him twice to be like, is that a confession? Watch his closing statement and let us know what you think. Because honestly, I do sit there and think, one minute, this sounds more like a confession than a closing statement. I can all see that. I'm intrigued. So I think that's everything for this case. I've tried my hardest to find everything I can on this case. Yeah. And the documentary is really interesting. It tells you so much. The amount of articles I read and they all said different things. Whereas the documentary is very much his defendants are in it. It covers what happened in court. You can kind of... I also think from a documentary, you can get other people's feelings across. So you can sit there and the way people will say things and their mannerisms you just sit there and think oh that's a bit suspect because I think the documentary made me even more certain that Dante was innocent mm -hmm. and when I was just reading the articles I was very like okay it's Justin it's Justin it's Justin but as soon as I finished the documentary I was like Mr Sue as a mm. sweet old innocent man as you would expect I didn't even think about Dr Sue until after we received that email from our source and they obviously explained a bit more about Dr. Sue. And I was like, wow, I didn't actually realise his past and how much he really could have been involved and could have actually done this. I generally thought it could have been Justin. I think it's very easy because it's like even in the documentary, like the first episode, you see the initial interviews with Justin and Dr. Sue. And in the interview, Dr. Sue is just throwing Justin under the bus. Like, yeah, Justin's messed around with the cameras before. That's why I thought it was him. I was thinking, why would you do that? Like, you wouldn't throw your son under the bus. And no. he, it just seemed like he was very much like, yeah, it's Justin, it's Justin, it's Justin. And then yeah. as soon as someone else came on the scene, it was like, oh no, maybe it's him, maybe it's him. Yeah, yeah. It's like... And I think he tried to play the old man card of, oh, I'm very forgetful. No, I think you know exactly what you've done. Yeah. And you're just trying to make everyone else take the fall for your crime. He also said that he phoned Justin because he was the closest. If you Google Maps, the University of Florida and Broadway College, they are very close. Very close. Yeah. It still blows my mind that he didn't call the police. If I saw someone on the ring doorbell trying to break in and disconnect the camera, I'd be straight on the phone to the police. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go, Abby, I know you're at the gym, you're closest. To Can you just go home and check on the house? I wouldn't. If you saw someone breaking in, I'd be like, fuck off. Or I'd, call my, or I'd, even, I'd call the house or my wife. Yeah. I think there's someone in the house. Is everything okay? I wouldn't yeah. send my son. Yeah. I honestly do think that they need to look into Dr. Sue again and in a bit more detail and actually care this time. Yes, definitely. They would hate to admit that they were wrong. Oh, yeah. Definitely. They don't want to admit that they're wrong. It's American police. That's, I feel like American police as well, like obviously someone like that here, but they are, they really do think that they're the dog's bollocks. Obviously, there probably is some police officers out there who love their job and actually want to do their job. But unfortunately, yeah. there are a lot of officers who are still living in the 1940s where they think women deserve to live in the kitchen and black people are criminals. Yeah. As someone who's been in the police firsthand not as a police officer <laughs> but i worked with someone exactly like that that's what i mean and he wasn't even a police officer and he was just some officers they get the uniform they get the title and it's like they're yeah. now above the law yes it's like sarah everard that police officer killed her yeah raped and killed her and he used his power yeah i know to lure her into his car yeah i just think police need a good old clear out like how to say it so usually when people start killing people 
the first kill is always it never works out it's kind of a mess this kill just seems very organized yeah and i just you broke into someone's house someone was there and you killed them you panic to shit yeah unless you plan to kill him because i don't think maybe dr sue planned to kill her i think maybe they had an argument and he did kill her and it was just like a rage kill and he just started stabbing her yeah if you were some random and you broke someone's house and you saw someone you wouldn't go into like a massive rage and leave the scene as it was i just i don't believe it i just do not believe it no no i don't either we need to be defendants i know for people who have been wrongly convicted we really should i'd get way too like passionate about that I yeah same this person is innocent. Just anyway, I feel like we've got really off track. Yeah, now. sorry about that. <laughs> so, thank you for listening for the past few weeks to our two parter. Really hope that you've enjoyed it. And as always, let us know what you think on our socials. So, on Instagram, we are at the Mystery Room Pod. On Facebook, we're at the Mystery Room Podcast. And on Patreon as well. And you can also listen to us on Samsung Podcast, obviously Spotify. Oh, we have a YouTube channel. We do have a YouTube channel. We have only got one episode up there at the moment. But it's not a YouTube channel where you can see us. No. Because we actually look like hobos. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Sat in the cupboard, we're in, we honestly do. We're in the dark as well, so... <laughs> we, we've got like a tartan blanket. We're sat on the floor. Like, we do. We look, we look like hobos. <laughs> So we really defi- need to work on that. Yeah, so you're definitely not going to see a video of this recording anytime no. soon. No. I think eventually when we do have a permanent setup where we can sit comfortably. Oh, yeah, because honestly, my whole, my leg has gone yeah, down. Yeah, honestly. I just physically cannot feel my left leg right now. We're like deformed right now, like because of the room in here. I don't know how, because Abby's got, actually got more leg room than me. I'm literally <laughs> like squished up between a box <laughs> and a shelf and abby seems to be able to i can stretch one yeah leg out. <laughs> she can at least stretch her leg out and i'm literally crumpled up in the corner and maybe we'll i've swap. got i've got pins in either do you know at the start i really like the corner because it's quite comfortable but then halfway through i'm literally like yes. brilliant my bum's gone numb and yeah. my left leg it's got pins and needles and it's just horrendously painful <laughs> next week we'll swap so also remember that if you want to hear our interview with a dna expert tiffany roy then you need to head over to our patreon and throw us some spare change and you will receive exclusive access to this interview and it's only on patreon that you can get access to the interview it will not be published on any other podcast platform you really will not want to miss it it's very juicy and still don't believe that Dante's innocent I honestly think that after this interview you will start agreeing with us more because mm. we are right <laughs> there's no there's no denying it we are right I've never felt so passionate about a case honestly there's just something about this case I'm just like no I feel like some cases I see they're like they're trying to prove this person's innocence I'm like they are definitely guilty but with this one I am definitely thinking you are 100 percent innocent my friend i did i have enjoyed this one it's very different yeah. to what we usually do yeah yes there's someone in prison but yeah. we don't think it's the right person in prison also i do think that when maybe there are more updates out there as season two comes out we could do another episode on this yeah like a bit of an update to be yeah. like oh this is what's happened yeah but if he does get exonerated big up the mystery room because i actually don't know any other podcast that covers this case no we're still quite recent isn't it really yeah but you heard it first here at the mystery room again we hope you enjoy if you want to leave us any messages or you want to email us you can find all our details on our socials like abby said so we hope you enjoy your easter weekend and don't go eating too much chocolate actually that's a lie eat as much chocolate as you want and we really hope that you enjoy whatever you are doing this bank holiday Yeah, so have a lovely weekend, everyone. I just say to Abby, we should go out. What do you mean go out? I think go out, have a few bevfragenos. Until Sunday. We need to go out. I haven't been out for ages. I know, I know. I feel like it's just... And I work a lot at the moment, so... (laughs) You need to let loose. (laughs) I I do. (laughs) Got home from work today and Abby was like pouring herself a glass of wine. And I was like, oh, where's my glass? And she she was like you did a 13 hour shift i didn't think you'd want a glass of wine i'm sorry that's when i need a glass of wine (laughs) that's a good point 
I'm sorry. I know now for next time. Okay, I just I feel like we're rambling on now. So yeah, we are. We're, like... gonna let, we're gonna let you guys go and enjoy. Yes, have a lovely weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye.